comes. THQ. So, about for you, Bottom, it's a pretty good game. But like many things, it has humble beginnings. This is SpongeBob's Crippen's Revenge of the Flying Dutchman. Which, Are I do like to consider ready? something of a predecessor to the Alfie Bottom. It plays pretty differently, but there's some striking similarities I notice right here and there. So, I figure I might as well uh, point them out while I get to them. I didn't actually play this game much uh, when I was younger. I had played it before, but I never actually owned it. It was one of those deals where you just kind of played it somewhere else and you knew what the game was, but you never really actually played through it yourself. Uh, but a lot of people seem to have played this as a sort of childhood game, since I play those kinds of SpongeBob games for some reason. Uh, I figured I might as well play through this, so why not? Uh, I looked at it and it doesn't look like that bad of a game, so why not? And I am going to talk over that entire intro so that uh, YouTube doesn't automatically flag my video for uh, having music that's copyrighted. Something that I really like though is it opens up like an actual episode, even has a title card. Uh, anyways, let me get thrown into here. Uh, so, it's one of those like Super Mario Sunshine type interactive menu things. In game menus, except I can't jump. But uh, look at that. I'll just employ the month awards everywhere. So here we are on the Crusty Crab. You can uh, access a number of things from here. New game, continue game, uh, extras and options. Options aren't really worth showing. Extras, I haven't looked at these. DVD trailer, I'm not sure that what the DVD is. I guess it's just one of the DVD games. Theme song, you just saw that. So gallery is concept art, which I'll let you guys look up if you want to on your own. And there's also the hints and tips, which you saw when I was seeing that men menu, which is actually a video explaining how to play the game, I guess. I haven't actually looked at it um, since I was a bit short on time. And by the way, I don't think those patties are supposed to be on fire, so let's attend to those patties and start a new game. So you might have noticed this game has loading screens for other loading screens. Battle Freaking Bottom actually used the same uh, bubble-esque loading screen, except it actually looked a little bit better. This game is kind of weird about its loading screens on the PS2, but I'll explain when we get to it. Dream. Mr. Krabs had to close the Krusty Krab! Like that it ever happened. I have the feeling today will be like no other day! <sighs> Now, I wonder where Gary is. I should probably walk him before I go to work. Or put pants on. Or stop being cockeyed. Anyways. Pants. Yes. So here we are. Sunjob's bedroom. Sunjob's house's layout is pretty much identical to what it was in Balfour Bottom, actually. Or rather, it would be. And so this game's kind of be an inspiration for a lot of things in terms of design. But, oh well. Not necessarily in a bad way, in that probably come out and rip things off or anything like that, but... Anyhow, so this game's loading screens, I'll mention, you'll find me saving the game a lot. Because, uh, this game has some issues on the PS2. There are some slight differences uh, between this game on the GameCube and on the PS2. Uh, the final levels layout is slightly different. Uh, the... There are a couple textures that are different for some reason. And... The game on the PS2, for some reason, will oftentimes crash on the loading screen. So I'm going to save every couple areas, uh, just to make sure that if the game does crash, we don't pay too much for it. Anyways. And now the door is wooden, instead of metal. Okay. Good morning, Gary! Wait till I tell you about my crazy dream where the Krusty Krab was closed and- Meow! <gasps> oh, you don't say. You had a dream too? Meow! 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 That something really bad is gonna happen? Uh-huh. Meow! 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 That really is bad. Well, I know just the thing to cheer you up. I'll go fetch your favorite fetching stick. 
So I'm pretty sure this game has almost all the voice actors of the, worry, of the most. We can squeeze in a few rounds of fetch before work. If I can just find your favorite stick. Of the show. Um, I Battle for King Bomb got most of them. I think this game I've got all of them. Snowdrop's voice sounds slightly different, but that might be because, be because this game is kind of old, not because it doesn't have Tom Kenny. And Snowdrop doesn't have a bathroom anymore. I don't know why. You can run in here and do all sorts of things. If you keep going back in. There are like three or four different things you can play if you go in there. Anyways. But yeah, the, the house is layout. It's pretty much identical to what it was about from the bottom. I don't know. Or Balfour Bob took pretty much identical house layout. I don't know why. Anyhow, let's go to the other, only other place in the house we can go. Your little friend Gary would like to play some fetch? Creepy voice! Yeah, I guess. Very well. Then move next to his fetching stick and press the action button to pick it up. Then you can carry the stick to Gary and delight him. One thing that they, one voice actor that they not did not get from the actual show was the French narrator. This one just sounds kind of creepy, I think, to be honest. His voice is, especially how there's no music playing when he speaks, it's kind of weird. Anyways, bonk. You didn't think I was gonna leave for work without a quick game of fetch, did you, Gary? Now come on, boy! Go long! Longer! Longer! It's my special wall piercing stick. What did you dig up outside, boy? Hmm, there's something written on it. I think it says, Damger, Donut Alpine, Orelsi. Yeah. I wonder what that means. Well, maybe we should see what's inside. SpongeBob. Oh, don't be such a soggy sport, Gary. What harm can there be in just a little peek? SpongeBob being very ignorant is not really limited to the later SpongeBob seasons. Or at least when it comes to the video just games. What I oh, well. always wanted a muddy little bottle. Just think of all the fun we can have cleaning it. Here we go. Gary's eyeballs were weird. Arr, who summons me from my endless slumber? I'll have your eyes for appetizers and your insides for dessert, for I am the Flying Dutchman. Hi. I'm sorry about that. Just hop right back into your bottle and we'll bury you back out in the yard so you can... Silence! I'll not return to that prison ever again! And what's this? You've gotten into my treasure, have you? Ooh, I hate it when someone messes with my doubloons. Now, what shall I do with ye lowly knaves who dared stir me up? Let me consult my rule book on ghostly doings. Hmm. In the case of accidental discovery and wanton disruption of my booty, oh, no. the perpetrators must serve for an eternity on my bloody crew. Blood. Well, I ain't never been out to sea with a talking cheese block before, but rules is rules, so I gotta take you with me. Are you ready? Hold on there, Mr. Dutchman, sir. Uh, technically speaking, it was not me who found you. Uh, Gary's the one who dug you up. You jerk! Ooh, that's a relief. This little varmint looks like he can do ten times the work. If he can survive my hypnotic spell. <laughs> hey, Hans, you inserted very well no, the use of sponges. No, not Gary! That's not what I meant! Take me, me, me! Not him, him, him! Too late! My decision is made. Now I've got to check on the treasure stashed back on my ship to make sure no one's been spreading that around. But I'll return shortly to pick up my new crewmate. Say your farewells before I return. Don't worry, Gary. I'll think of something, and it'll be the type of something that will save you. You can bet on it. Oh. The writing for this game isn't the best, I don't think, but it's pretty good. For the most part. But, uh... Snow doubloons are everywhere. You know some similarities between this and the GBA version of the game, uh, in terms of premise, in that Sundrob found the Flying Dutchman who happened to be inside of a bottle that was inside of multiple boxes. And now his doubloons are everywhere alongside his treasures. But, uh, the re your reason for collecting all the treasures is a little bit different this time around. Uh, <laughs> I've been platforming a lot this far, but I'll explain the actual controls uh, in a minute. Looks like something in my backyard is blocking the door. Wonderful. Also, Sundrop's kitchen just kind of doesn't have a south wall. I don't know why. And suddenly, metal door. 
But I do plan on making this a 100% playthrough, like I did on the GBA. So I will be picking up a lot of doubloons. There is uh, more stuff for 100% as well. The big bad Dutchman. Not us. I heard that. Some of the writing in this game is kind of funny, though, I think. So it is kind of awkward, and I find that the voice actors, I'm their voice actors from SpongeBob, they're good voice actors. I occasionally find that they seem to kind of do a weird performance, not because they're bad, but because the writing is kind of awkward at times. But most of the time, like, things right there, I think the writing in this game is actually kind of funny. And before we go, why not? Distance myself from the TV properly. Never fear, Mermaid Man, for you are not alone in your fight against injustice. Yes. You also have the poor man's version of the sponge ball. Uh, if you hold, crouch while uh, running around, you can crouch by pressing R1, jump while crouching, get a big jump. Uh, or just crouch while running and you do this, which makes you go slightly faster. Yes. Um,. The controls in this game take a little bit of getting used to it first, um, largely because the SpongeBob controls in an odd way. This game works best on the D-pad, you might find, um, just because the controls more, it's kind of more solid how it controls. Um, it's something odd about SpongeBob that you might not really pick up uh, watching instead of playing the game is that he actually has to accelerate when he moves. Uh, like if I start running. And then turn around, and he like, actually has to stop and then accelerate again. And it takes a long time to get used to. And if he has to turn around, it takes even longer. It makes controlling him feel kind of clunky at first, but you get used to it. It's not that bad. And then area controls just fine. And out the door we go. This time it's not locked from the inside like it was in Battle for New Bottom for some reason. This game doesn't seem to have the highest production cost. But that's not necessarily saying that would mean it's a bad game, by any means. But it kind of shows, especially since it's on a CD instead of a DVD. And my PS2 seem to not, seems to not like CDs. It uh, gets really hot when it's reading CDs for some reason, so I kind of don't like playing this game. But whatever. So let's open this thing up. Bonk. There's a doubloon there. I do plan on picking up all the doubloons, like I said. Uh, if you pause and choose one of your two options, one of them being your to-do list, uh, you can see in the top right-hand corner uh, how much you've collected of each thing there is to be found in that area. You have doubloons, jellyfish, and sand dollars. You'll learn about each of those as time goes on. Um, until then, though, I'm just going to uh, run around Bikini Bottom and do what sponges do best, being sponges. And underwear. So, uh, as you can see in the top right-hand corner, we have five underwear. That's not actually lives, that is indeed health. There are no lives in this game, thankfully. Um, and each time you get hit, you lose one, one uh, bit of health, of course. And if you have one health left, you will not longer have pants. You'll simply have underwear. Uh, if you are pick up a fresh pair of pants, your health will be fully replenished, which is nice. So, notice from the get-go that there are a lot of things we can't actually do yet, like swing this reef blower. Very scary. How does Squidward expect to protect his garden with that? True. It is not scary when it sits still, but it's really something when it moves. Do you see that little fan nearby? You can blow on the fan with your reef blower to activate the mechanism. I don't have a reef blower. Um, <laughs> this game is full of anachronisms. You can do make cutscenes and whatnot happen really out of order. It's kind of weird. Like, what happened there, that's not important at all. <laughs> he has four arms! Oh, that's awesome, I never noticed that. S squiddy. But, uh... Yeah, so it acts as if I have Reef Blower right now, which I don't. The thing I've also noticed is that I can't, like, go to things and talk to them. I actually have to, uh... Just walk into an area and I'll automatically have some kind of cutscene start. Which I don't really like, because there's not usually an indication that such a scene can be initiated. But, uh, before we start picking up all sorts of things up, let's just run around. Patrick happens to be here. Patrick, is everything okay? 
Not okay, not okay. Something fell on my roof and now my TV doesn't work. I can't get up there to fix the thingy and I'm missing all my favorite shows. No. Oh, that's too bad. I wish there was something I could do to help. Ah, but there is. You can get up there if you try. Hold the duck button, then press the jump button to reach high places. What are you waiting for, SpongeBob? I'm missing my shows! A real buddy would get up there and make my life complete again! Ah, uh, oh, barnacles. I've seen a few people complain about the designs of the characters in this game. I think they look pretty fine for the most part. Aside from Patrick, Patrick looks weird. But, uh, that aside, I think the characters look pretty fine for the most part. I think this game's visual presentation for them in general for the most part is pretty fine. Alrighty, looks like I found your problem. There's a big thingy on your thingy and it's all bent out of shape. But it looks too big for me to move. You don't need to move it when you can simply break it apart. Face the container and press the action button to carotte it, chop it. Boom. I'm not going to speak Patrick just yet because we have stuff to go up, do up here. I might have also noticed that I can glide when I'm in the air. If I just tap the X button while I'm in the air, I won't be glide. Um, but... Uh, something that's kind of weird that will also take some used to is... It's not holding the X button, it's just tapping it. So if you tap it once, you'll do it throughout your entire jump. It's kind of awkward. On top of the pineapple, maybe. Yeah, you can get on top of the pineapple, but there's no reason to. Can't uh, bug Squidward just yet, so let's talk to My Patrick. Is fixed. You saved me from thinking, SpongeBob. I love that line. Save your gratitude, my jolly pink friend. It's all in a day's work for a sponge such as I. But uh, maybe you can help me with a problem that I'm having. You see, it all started this morning when Gary and I were playing fetch. Oh, on second thought, who wants to stay at home and watch TV on a day like this? I'm going downtown to see the new construction site. Maybe you could meet me there and we'll play Mermaid Man and Vertical Boy. Last one, there's a nematode. So, here's a nice little introduction to something. Uh, this game actually does have a pretty similar format to Power for King Bottom, even though I said otherwise earlier. Uh, each area in the game has tasks for you to do. In this game, you actually have to complete every single one, but, uh... Yes, thank you for that, Spongebob. Uh, there are various tasks for you to complete. I can crouch into things, like in GBA. <laughs> that is no ordinary letter tile. It is a clue. Gather all the letters that spell your name, and you will have enough clues to find a hidden treasure. Kind of weird. I, I think the concept is that as you're going throughout being King Bomb and doing random stuff, you're finding clues to the whereabouts of the Dutchman's treasures. Uh, now, why you would want to find Dutchman's treasures, I don't know. We're not actually told why yet, I don't think. It's kind of weird. Uh, so we're just going around treasure hunting, I guess. But yeah, each letter we find is actually, uh, in reality, a clue to where the treasure is. Once we find all of those, we can actually, uh... We're gonna have to put all of them together to f find out where the treasure actually is. I really need to reach that other ledge! But I don't think I have it in me. Don't be discouraged. You can do it. Press jump, then you can glide a bit farther if you press jump again before you land. Why do the Dutchman's balloons have the Dutchman's face on them? Are they like custom made? And no, I refuse to be a part of your system. No gliding for me. But yes, these things are basically golden spatulas, and, but instead of needing a certain amount of them to get through to different areas, you just, uh, have to collect all of them. That's pretty much it. Jellyfish work a little bit differently in this game. Different jellyfish, different colors act differently. But, uh, I'll well, explain how they work. I think blue jellyfish actually will run away, run away. Green jellyfish will just move upwards if you're close to them. Yeah, pink jellyfish will follow a predetermined path. I don't know what yellow jellyfish do. They seem to just, like, go in one direction the whole time. And there's red jellyfish that will actually move towards you. Oh. I don't know what the yellow jellyfish do. 
But it seems to be everything for you to pick up in this area thus far. Look at this! Oh, this is here. I wish I could take a long ride on the bus. Just think of all the amazing places outside Bikini Bottom and all the fun things I could do. Your wish can easily come true. All you need is the right ticket for this bus stop. When you have the correct ticket, jump onto the bench and the bus will stop for you. Kinda like the taxi. It's kinda oh, annoying though. Sauce. I still don't have the right ticket for this bus stop. Jump onto the bench will automatically move you to that area if you have the ticket, which is kind of annoying. By the way, these are all uh, rock bottom styled buzz. Although rock bottom doesn't appear in this game for some reason. It's kind of weird that its existence was acknowledged, but you never actually find the rock bottom itself. But I have different areas to be in, so let's go to different areas. Camera, what are you doing? Poor stuff. I find this game's visual presentation to be pretty fine for the most part. The textures look kind of decent for the most part. The game's, like, shading style really hasn't aged well, but, oh well. Well, anything kind of looks like the game isn't shaded at all, which, for a large part, is actually true. But, uh, hey, we can actually get on top of the Crest Crab this time. And yes, you can go to first person, which is nice. Unfortunately, like, uh, Graffiti Kingdom, you can't actually, uh, Freeze time for going to first person. Oh, tartar sauce. Clams in the trash again. Looks like Mr. Krabs will have to call the exterminator. Do not be so hasty, for these clams are just a part of this cycle of life. When a clam shuts its mouth, you can jump onto it and launch very high. Sometimes valuable things are hidden in high places. The voice will always be creepy. Yeah, I'm wearing trash pants. Do these things, like, eat me if I touch them? Okay. But yeah, so you can bounce using clams. Uh... This is where the golden underwear was. Also, the Crystal Crab sign's, like, normal clam color instead of pink for the most part. I don't know why it's like that since it's supposed to be pink on the show. Oh, well, one of the tasks you may have noticed when I paused the game is, uh, picking up lots of doubloons. There's also catching lots of jellyfish. We'll, uh, get to that in a minute. Let me get to this one. Oh, eh. Yeah. So lots of tedious collection missions. Every single level in the game will actually have missions for you uh, involving collecting doubloons and jellyfish. Although in varying degrees. Can I jump on this part of the bench and not? Like, activate the whole cutscene thing. Yes, I can. That would be really d risky to do if I was actually able to go to downtown. Because if I landed like I just did right there, I would actually go to downtown. Oh, yeah, I know, SpongeBob. Come on. Well, the textures must look pretty nice in this game. I think this game's low point in its presentation is actually its audio. They all sound really odd and like, I don't know, like stock noises and whatnot. I don't know why. And the voice acting is very nice, but like the sound effects for jumping, just like generic spring and water whoosh sounds, even though Battle for King Bob kind of did the same thing with the spring noises. I don't know. Same thing kind of goes for the music though. This game only has like six music tracks in all seriousness. This game didn't really have much space for having lots of music tracks, since it's actually on a CD. We'll deal with those hooks over there in a minute. Well, this one's just kind of sitting there. Huh? Uh, instead of on a DVD like most PS2 games are, which I've explained before, my PS2 seems to not like. Hey, seriously, how do I... I guess one thing I can do is I can go onto this pole. Alright, so I have an idea. No, no. I wouldn't say that just because it has weird sound effects it's a bad game or anything like that. It's just something that always sticks out to me. It's one of those things I first noticed when I uh, 
saw the game. Right. Your glide does run out after a little while. So it's something I kind of have to get used to. Also, you do have a shadow in this game, but it doesn't show on certain objects. So, like this one. So if you want to do precise platforming, it can be kind of rough sometimes because you may not know where you are in the air. Spot camera, no, please. I will get this doubloon. I am. There you go. I'm determined. And no, I don't know what the, all this gunk is behind the drum bucket. Oops. Ow, it's painful gunk. No. Can I stand on top of that? Apparently not. If you're really good at jumping in this game, uh, you can actually bugger the game out in all sorts of ways, getting in all sorts of places you're not supposed to. But I'm not going to do that. Since this is actually a legitimate playthrough. Okay, so I seem to have pretty much everything I can get. Okay, seriously, what's with the camera and these poles? But, uh... Button! Yes, you can do a kind of slam attack if you press circle in the air. Which was on scene later adapted into Battle for Yuhi Bottom. So you can get into these tents, and uh, you might also notice now that uh, if you go back to the neighborhood side of Yuhi Bottom, there's actually another tent for us to find. But you can change the various costumes here. You might remember the, the, the reef floor as mentioned earlier, but we haven't unlocked that yet. Same goes for Mermaid Man. So you need square pants or fishing gear. Squarepants has no special abilities, so let's be fishing gear. You want to default to being a jellyfisher at any given time if you don't have a reason to be something else. Because this is the only costume with which you can actually catch jellyfish, which are required for 100% completion. And they can catch hooks, but whatever. Different costumes actually do have different uh, gliding animations. I don't know if they actually glide differently. Oh, Mr. Krabs warned me about playing hooky. But they look so fun! Maybe just one quick ride while no one's looking. Ah, you little troublemaker. Those hooks can be very dangerous. But I promise not to tell if you use your fishing net to hang from them. That's the only safe way to do it. But, uh... You might have noticed by this point that the music in this game isn't based on where you are. It's actually based on what costume you're wearing. There are very few places in the game where, if you are wearing uh, the jellyfish gear, uh, that you will not hear the jellyfishing music. It gets really, really old, and it's really dissonant sometimes with, re with actual location in the game. It's kind of awkward. But yes, now we're gonna going to want to run around and catch all the jellyfish. You know, as for certain jellyfish as well, like I mentioned, these green jellyfish actually, uh, go upwards. And you can just catch them like that sometimes. But it said, uh, you can use L1 to sneak up on them. You can indeed do that. And, uh, they won't fly upwards. But let's not worry about that right now. We got a jellyfish to catch. But, uh, every area in this game does have jellyfish to be caught and the balloons to be collected uh, as a requirement for uh, collecting uh, hey, as a requirement for collecting all the uh, clues letter tiles and uh, even without that taken into account oh no even without that taken into account uh, you do actually need to collect certain amounts of uh, sand dollars or Jellyfish to progress through certain parts of the game. There are no optional things in this game, and you can 100% the game uh, by getting all the jellyfish and balloons you don't need to get. Put that aside. So, one of the things to do on our to do list actually takes place here at the Krusty Krab. 
I probably should have saved the game before I ran in here. It's rather peculiar task, and you will find jellyfish absolutely anywhere. I'm gonna save the game right now. Why well, I always have to say that the memory card is 8 megabytes and for the PlayStation 2? It's kinda weird. But yes, plenty of jellyfish in the Krusty Krab. How peculiar. Why is there a porthole on the glass? But uh, there are many doubloons to be found in the Krusty Krab, naturally. <laughs> um, for example, you can actually... Can I not... Okay, well I can't do that with the jellyfishing net, I guess. What? There we go. You can break all these barrels, for one. And the inside every single one is actually... Uh, doubloons. At least one doubloon. And after I pick these up, I should have all the doubloons in the bottom, so I don't have to worry about nipping those up anymore. Maybe we can start picking up all the jellyfish. And if you guys really don't want to 100% this game, you don't get anything for it. I can uh, skip that. Just comment saying so if you don't want to watch you picking, up all, picking all the crap up. Whoops. Because, I mean, it makes this game's manual tasks even more manual. I mean, you only have to catch eight jellyfish, and I just caught eight jellyfish, so that's all I had to do. Hey, go away. Ow. Don't go away. And he just kind of became bubbles, and that got me another uh, letter tile, I guess. Yes, yeah, so let's not pick up that last letter tile just yet. I have to actually pick up all the doubloons in the key bottom if I can. Oops. Oh, and you can actually go in here this time. As we saw earlier. Oh, there are actually doubloons of jellyfish in here too, I didn't realize that. Oh no, those are just pants. Yeah, pants in this game are weird. They just kind of like to float where they feel like. So let's grab our ceiling pants and be on our way. Ugh, I cut my tongue somehow a few days ago. It still hasn't healed, and it friggin' hurts. I have 91% of the doubloons. I'm missing that quite a bit, actually. That's not good. I'll, uh... I'll have plenty of time to look for those later, though. So you pick up all the... Everything that, uh... Spells out Snowdrop's name, and you kind of have a seizure or something. But now that we have all the clues, it's time for some serious thinking. So, to do that, we go inside Snowdrop's brain, and his eyes become incredibly beady. After rolling back into his head, actually. So, all the clues we've picked up now become these things. Which we must uh, rearrange in order to figure out what it is that we must do. Uh, they're all incredibly easy, randomly generated slide puzzles. I don't remember what happens if you fail, I just think you like die and then restart. But yeah, keep that photo in mind. Because that's where the treasure is that you want to find. And then Snowdrop does a really awkward animation. No, I have the Snowdrop Scrimmage movie DVD just like sitting on the floor right here. I don't know why. It's in a yellow case. Uh, should I end off the episode here? Oh, crap. I should have ended off the episode a little bit ago, actually. Uh, dive into comedy adventure that's bigger, better, and more absorbing than the rest. I'm not going to read off the back of a DVD case right now. So, we have another costume. It sort of actually has a number of costumes. Um, more than just four. One being this, the dousing slash divining rod. Uh, so you might have noticed that uh, we saw the jellyfish, I mean, we saw the uh, treasure at a certain location after we put together that uh, little puzzle. And now, 
No, see, there's also the costume move over here. Although, I guess you can't change a costume. Yeah. And uh, if you hold, hold square, you can do this and rotate, and your controller will vibrate, and little sounds will be made, and then you'll see, like, circles appearing uh, when you're facing the general direction of a treasure. But if you actually figure out where the treasure is from the uh, photo, then you don't need to worry about that. Pixelated flowers! Yay, and a sock. Cue obligatory small children! Yeah, obligatory small children. Anyways. And so I accidentally went over limit with this episode, but whatever. Over my usual time limit. But uh, after this cutscene, that's going to be it for this episode. Think of it as a special extended first episode, I suppose. little varmint. The time has come for you to join my ghostly crew. No use fighting it. Your fate's been decided. Now looky here what I got for you. That's right. Watch the little sticky. <laughs> Gary, where are you, boy? Gary! Why did you take Gary, Mr. Dutchman? Why? 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 It's in the rules. No one makes my best friends into pirates, and I mean no one! Well, Sundrop now has resolve. And we can learn all about that resolve in the next episode. Let's play Sundrop Pants: Revenge of Flying Dutchman for the PS2 this time around. See you guys! <laughs>